Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. You are about to listen to the Dork Forest. Let's give you the info about it. First of all, you know the websites. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. All of my podcasts, including uh, videos of my stand-up, my stand-up schedule, merchandise you can purchase if you would like, and a lot more info than you possibly even need. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg sang and produced and composed that song at the beginning of the show. He sang with his wife, Sarah. It's very beautiful. At the end of the program, he sings his version of the Mexican hat dance. That's Mike Rickberg. Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He is uh, the web designer over there. And Patrick Brady fixes the audio. And in this case, there's a video intro. Very exciting. Anyway, those are the websites. If you want to support the show, you're doing it already by listening to it or watching it. And another way is to tell your friends and family, go on iTunes, do a review. Another way is to just give me money. Yeah. You could go use the donate button. You can make it even monthly if you're okay with making things monthly. You do a PayPal monthly. There's a monthly choice on PayPal. The PayPal is a button on the Jackie Cation or the Dork Forest website, and it goes directly to me. Thank you very much. I will use it wisely or foolishly. Your call as well. Now, my email address, Jackie at JackieCation.com, is where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns and about the Dork Forest. And I do have a Venmo account. It's Jackie hyphen Cation, oddly enough. Another way to support the show is on DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. There's an Amazon link. And the Amazon link just takes you to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show because you came from Jackie Cation or DorkForest.com. Very exciting. Other than that, oh, there are there is a band camp. You can if you have listened to all the episodes that are free and you need more content, there are several live episodes that are at thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost me a couple of bucks, so I charge a couple of bucks. There's also a storytelling album there that you can listen to some stories that I did live. And there are 17 free episodes before the Dork Forest was pre-recorded. So the audio isn't very good, but the guests were super funny and fun and dorky. So if you want to do that, go to the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Other than that, let's see if there are other things that I should be talking about. Possibly uh, the merch. Yeah, if you want to buy merch. The only other thing I want to talk about is the merch. You can get Dork Forest t-shirts. Uh, and you can get stand-up comedy t-shirts. You can get my albums or my DVD over at JackieCation.com slash merch. There's pins, there's a challenge coin, there's a bunch of new things happening over there. Anyway, a lot of information. I think, I don't think I've missed anything, but who cares? Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm over here in, uh, in my house. And Sophia Alexandra's back of the show. You only did a live one, so now we get to just talk to you. Welcome to the program. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, Jackie. But of course, but of course. And uh, I will say that as I do my layering of whatever these windows are, um, that it's the Sophia, S-O-F-I-Y-A. It's at the Sophia. And it's mm -hmm. Sophia Alexandra, everybody. Stand-up comic, new album out called Father's Day. That's right. Everywhere that you get comedy albums. So chop, chop, figure it out. Um, <laughs> You're you're indoors. Hopefully, you, you you got you got time to kill. Let's do this. I like the the brisk, no nonsense uh, <laughs> nudging to get my album. I yeah. I wish that I was as good as pitching it. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, download yeah. it. You might like it. You know, here's a picture say. of my tits. Will you buy it now? <laughs> what about now? And uh, what about just the left one? Anyway, <laughs> very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, you're doing a scoop neck. Okay, so here's the weird thing. So I asked for your dorkdom, and you came up with something so incredibly dorky 
This oh, yeah. Is a, this is huge. This is a big thing. My brother Phil has wanted to come on and talk about this very topic. I called him just to gloat that he was not going to be talking about it. He said, <laughs> well, I could talk about it too later. And I said, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> and uh, But right now, Sophia Alexander is going to talk about the Robert Jordan series, Wheel of Time. Do I have that correct? Yeah. And if people don't think that that sounds like appropriately nerdy yet, um, I would like to tell them that this is a 14 book series and the right. average page count is about 800. <laughs> right. And isn't it 17 books, three by Brandon Sanderson? Yes. I was, I'm sorry to be a truther, Robert Jordan <laughs> truther over here. Uh, no, the last three count uh, for sure. But Robert Jordan died. The, the, I, I, I'm not saying that writing this killed him. But uh, I am suggesting it because that is a lot of writing. <laughs> it is so many. It's because of 14 books and each one's 800 pages. Yeah, between 400 and 800, they get longer as you keep going. That's because they were success. This is my unsubstantiated opinion is that once a series becomes successful, less and less editing happens. They're like, no, no, you're a genius. Go. And the hence 200 pages of camping in the last Harry Potter book. <laughs> so uh that's for me now here's the thing about the robert jordan books i've never read them um, Weird. Weird. wow jackie i, I can't know. believe i came here and out dorked you <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh it's 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 usually not possible in in reading stuff but uh for some reason i i didn't uh i didn't get it i didn't get it so uh it's still available i was just talking to my brother phil and he was like i love them they're so good and I was like, that's great. And, uh, and I said, here's the thing. I love yeah. them and they're not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, I do know what you mean. And it does not diminish how much I love them in that any is, way. <laughs> that is amazing to me that, that, because I have books like that myself that you're just like, no, they just keep going. That's what I love about them. So it's they're magic, right? They're fantasy, not science fiction. Ooh, okay, yes, Let they us begin. are magic, okay. and um, they never call um, what is being done magic in the books. It's okay. called channeling. Sure. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> you're um, making yourself giggle. <laughs> I know. I'm just so excited to talk about it. Okay. Uh, what I said to my husband, I was like, "How am I going to fit this into an hour?" He's like please feel sorry for those people. <laughs> All right. Oh no. Oh, they're soaking it up. Let's um, hear it. So, okay. First of all, you're like, yeah, I never got into these. So it, this probably has to do with timing. Okay. These came out in the nineties when I okay. was in high school and I was not having any sex and right. I was, I had so much free time. Okay. I didn't have a car. Uh, I didn't have a lot of friends. You were a so, child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just go blowing through these Robert Jordan books mm -hmm. um, as if, you know, at the end of that was a boyfriend, but there wasn't. No, no. Flash. Uh, or girlfriend, really. Um, so that, That's yeah. how we all spent our formative years. You're mm -hmm. really in the safest space you've ever been in. <laughs> yeah. So being so horny and so young with so much time is really how you end up getting into a series this long. And uh, the other thing that's probably a big selling point if you're a nerd is it touches on a lot of other mythologies from like other books and also like world religions and stuff so in that way it's also extra nerdy and fun and you're like oh this is actually about you know um king arthur's knights but like they're slightly renamed and like oh this reminds me of this so 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 he has no problem just co-opting he's just like mine Yes. That's, it's just like Judeo-Christian, Asian, Thor, who cares? I'm taking all of them. It's all just, of it. <laughs> all of it. The only thing yeah. he could not master was how to write women. <laughs> that oh, is really? something completely escaped him. This is interesting. Books. <laughs> my brother, my brother Phil actually said incredibly strong women characters. <laughs> That is exactly what a man who likes this series would think. <laughs> yes. um, 
I right away was like, oh no, he, this is sad. <laughs> just never getting it. Not even one time he's not getting it. <laughs> there this are, there are, there are women though, right? They, there are women. Here's how he likes to write them. Okay. Um, if there's a big meeting of women, um, at least two thirds of the meeting description will be about the different dresses the women are wearing. Because you know, bitches be shopping for bitches be dresses. Shopping. Are we? Are we? Are we also describing the men folk? Their their clothing. Does no. he like to? No doublets. No, no, no headwear. One cares. No one cares because they're no one... men. Okay, they have ideas that we need to talk about. <laughs> okay, Jackie, not outfits. <laughs> the women. It's like, oh, she was wearing a brushed red silk with uh, silver vines crawling up the sleeves. Uh, her just a hint of her bosom atop her, and also they're oh, like okay. so unbelievably chaste. There's oh. never any fucking in them. Oh, that's that's uh, that's that's how safe of him, safety mouse. Did, so maybe he was describing the dresses because he was like, yeah, and then I, that's that's how you'd get under it. He's that's like, that's as close as like I'm going to get. <laughs> 37 buttons that I would have to undo, but they're all made out of whalebone. Anyway, <laughs> or whatever the fuck. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, okay. So, yeah, so women are, it's not that he writes them as like, women are dumb and weak. It's not yeah. that kind of sexism. It's okay. like, it's like everyone's beautiful in some way because like, right. why would we care about a woman who's like not hot? And then right. um, all the description that is the men talking about how befuddled they are by any emotions or thoughts that the women have or behaviors. <laughs> They're like, well, I just don't get it. She seems mad. I don't understand why. Yeah, she's so mad. <laughs> Angry mad or has she gone mad? Is she insane? Uh, so, okay. Interesting you bring that up. So the man witches um who channel in okay. the series um go insane because the like, source book which one? is where the power comes from has been tainted long ago in the age of legends when the world broke sure. and the taint of course and the taint <laughs> makes <laughs> it so whenever the men channel it's dirty jackie it's too dirty <laughs> taint out of my concern sophia I know. So they were like, uh, yeah, so the men cannot be trusted. They go insane. So now like when people find out that the men have the channeling powers, yeah. they like still them, which means like sever them from the magic. And then generally they like die after or just like live very miserable lives. Like, but it's considered like to be like the price they pay for breaking the world. Oh, sort of like an Adam and Eve thing, but the guys yes. are the Eves. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's an interesting twist. I bet he was pretty proud of himself, Robert. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, it's, he's like, I'm a real feminist. And so <laughs> let me go. go. <laughs> this could get me laid. And uh, <laughs> so, but would the okay? So, did that happen? Does that happen from the get from book one? The dudes are go mad, or they okay, have so traditionally. Jackie, Jackie, you're so simple. <laughs> oh God, Don't go your linear. simplicity comes across in the fact that you perceive of time <laughs> as a line when the series is called the Wheel of Time. Oh my which God, means it is that it is circular. <laughs> time is and circular. It is. Okay. Time is circular. It spirals actually, and the and the wheel weaves as the wheel want something like that the wheel weaves at the beginning of everything it's the wheel it's weaving the pattern the pattern okay. is what the world is okay. the pattern can have rips in it such as oh. when you use a particular magic spell that kind of shoots laser bars and they're called bale fire and once they go through the fabric of uh Time. the pattern it burns a hole that is damaging and like is bad and like burns can burn people out of existence and oh. like events and it's very damaging you know who else did a lot of weaving the face <laughs> robert jordan i think had a classical education is what i'm suspecting oh yeah anyway, yeah definitely <laughs> good for him so the books so the the time is actually a wheel and and the and, the, and so it's all connected in what is like a like threads that go across that wheel and the way the channeling works is it affects the threads or the weave itself? No. 
No. Nope. Incorrect. It's, Good guess. <laughs> it's way more complicated than that. <laughs> no, what it is is, um, so, okay. So magic or whatever, which is not referred to as magic. Again, channeling. channeling. You can channel by weaving um, different uh, things. Fire, earth, air. Why wouldn't the other one? Water it's and spirit. 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 Um, so it's kind of like a little bit like... Um, Captain Planet, but like, <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> ain't all ancient cultures, but also it Captain is. Planet. Yeah, but I mean, I'm I like to relate to old kids. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and what I like is that spirit is in there. It's it's sort of the fifth element. It's an umami kind of element that's very beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, but so let's say uh, I did. I'm going to admit right here. I decided to read a little Wikipedia. <laughs> so I did read it that men mostly channel or do magic with earth and fire. And yes. women mostly do channel with air and water. Obviously. And air and water, notoriously feminine. I mean, and the ladies. Just, you're real gay if you weave those if you're a man. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? You can't it's, do it. It's, it's clearly there's, you're going to be pushed around on the schoolyard uh, if, if you're a boy and you're doing air and water. But that's what I mean. Jordan is very classically, this is feminine, this is masculine. And this is like one of the reasons why he's so trash at writing women. He cannot conceive of anything beyond the binary, really. Okay. And it, and it was written, and all of this was what, written in the 80s and 90s? I think it came out in the 90s. I don't know when he wrote them. Probably took him 20 years to get there. Oh, it, I don't know. it had to. It had yeah. to. But I, what I, I'm not above, uh, I have, the, I have the, uh, the Wikipedia open, and I am not above. No. Uh, taking a gander at the top of this thing. Another and so, thing that is very, uh, I would say, sexist is just the way that it's conceived uh, of how men and women channel. So when women channel, they have to picture a flower opening. And if they force it, <laughs> it doesn't work. Come on. Come on. Georgie O'Keefe somewhere is like, seriously? <laughs> no, Rolling that's over too literal, literal, Robert <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> and she was there for the literal. Uh, yes. Uh, that is, okay, 1990 to 2013. And he died in 2007. So he started writing them in 1990. And uh, he died in 2007. So in 1990, did you start reading them in 1990 90, or did you read them in 95 when they started in 96? Okay. And so, and you, and so there were probably several books to read by that time. Yes. But he wasn't done writing them until later. So I had to reread the entire series. Every time for the one end. would come out? No, for the next, for, I waited till all of the ones at the end were out. And then okay. I reread the whole series to get the end. Oh, okay. So you, so you read I had cancer. 96. I did not have a lot to do. <laughs> so I was like, well, this is the perfect time to reread 14 books that made me right. feel nice as a child. Yeah. So, okay. So, but, but here's the thing. So did you wait, like in 96, you read, let's say wh whatever the first four of them were out mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's him churning them out. Like this is a romance novel. Uh, it, it, so he's, so you read the first four and then you're like, where's the next one? Where's the next one? And then he would publish and you would go grab it? No. Yeah, I would go grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like, basically made it through, I think, seven or eight before I started having sex and friends. And, and, then, and Well, did you have to wait? Uh, no, not, not to belittle your sex drive, but no, uh, no, let please. us, let us, <laughs> but let us speak to uh, the books themselves. There were, yeah. how many were published in 96? Do you know? Um, I think at least two. Okay. So, um, so did you, so even when you, let's say it's, it's 2004, you're, you're getting some. Are you still looking on the shelves, hoping that there'll be a new Robert Jordan book? No, that's the thing. I stopped when I went to college. Oh, I just, okay. I like, basically had other shit to do. And then I didn't come back to them until cancer three go. years ago. <laughs> and then I reread everything from the beginning. And then the ones I didn't read uh, because I had stopped reading. Right. And by then, Brandon Sanderson had taken over with exactly. his notes and had finished the last mm -hmm. three novels at 
I, 800 pages as well? Uh, yeah, some of them even more, for sure over a thousand. Wow. Because it says here that Jordan thought it was one more book. I bet you he kept saying that. He's that Well, guy. from what I, sorry to be extra nerdy, but from what I understand, Sanderson really wrote one book. It's just that it's three because it's such an epic story. Right. Be well, and the thing is, is, is now my brother Phil told me that he ended up skipping book 11. So he read book 10 and then he read book 12 because he didn't have 11 handy. Huh. And, he, and he went back to 11 and it turns out the entirety of the eight page, the 800 pages of book 11 is three days. So like, I don't even remember. I have to see all of the covers next to me to like be like, oh yeah, this is the one about this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, um, it's not the kind of thing where you can keep the threads alive in your head when you're not reading it. It's just too many characters. Okay, and they break up into into different parties, right? I mean, you're not just yes. following the same dude every time, right? No, it's a ton of people and it's different like geographically, like his version of Asia, his version of whatever. And a lot of that stuff is pretty um, racist too. Like his okay. idea of like Native Americans and like his idea of, yeah, it's... <laughs> He's he doesn't just, understand a lot about different kinds of people. You know what he is? He might just be a, one of those guys that you're like, no, that's racist. What? No, okay, I'll stop it. But what? I don't, I, I think I'm being nice. And you're like, well, you are actually not. But as long as you can be taught, <laughs> please keep it together. It's a lot of like, oh, these like darker skin Asian people are inscrutable. You know, shit like that. Like these oh. little stereotypes of like, Okay, so it's just like that. And so that's interesting because um, the, okay, so here's the interesting thing is I just found a website that the Wheel of Time series list in order, 15 books. Brandon Sanderson has been, because my brother Phil, uh, he posits that Brandon Sanderson is a much better author than Robert. Yes, King. yes, I've heard this too. But the weird thing is when you are tapped to finish a guy's book it's not like you're gonna come in and like reinvent the wheel of time. <laughs> i'm sorry um you can't you can't you, you realize can't. some wordplay right there in the middle of your own sentence <laughs> I, god i'm so sad i miss people jaggy <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, it's weird to be tapped to finish someone's vision when you yourself are like a different kind of author and maybe like more advanced or better in certain things. But like, if you took it over and suddenly were like, yeah, no, this is what it looks like when you write women, if you know women, then people would be like, what do you mean? You didn't describe her dress and she wasn't tugging at her braid every moment when she was angry. <laughs> like that. Right, so Brandon Sanderson writes the women better? To your knowledge, or uh, from what I understand, in his other, in his in his own writings, he does. Well, I I've read the Mistborn series, and I've read a one-off, a blessedly one-off. Think about it, Sophia Alexandra, a book that has <laughs> one book, and it's a whole story, and then you're fucking done. Uh, it's an amazing <laughs> book. It's called Elantris, and it is beautiful and weird and like moody as fuck but it's incredibly great world building and it was probably why he was tapped to write this thing because uh it while it because mistborn was moody too and weird all misty uh and there were three of them and i i believe his publishers because i think they added a couple more the mistborn series here's my thing first book amazing we learn about the mist the second book <laughs> oh, we cure the mist third book ah oh, shit the mist is back? No, there's no fucking mist. That was what made that world interesting, sadly. Oh, <laughs> so that's, that's okay, a drag. That's just it's a drag. Yeah, so the Mistborn series, I say, just read the first one. It's great. Oh, but I, I'm, I'm definitely going to check them out now. And then the El Elantra, which? Elantris. Elantris. Yeah, Elantris. That's is what I'm going to It's gorgeous. It's, it's, it is literally, it's about, it's about religion and politics and immortality and, uh, 
uh, some really good looking people who lived in a walled off place and then they, they, <laughs> then they were cursed. And, uh, and then, and then they're being taken advantage of now that they're cursed and they're like, but we were trying to help anyway. So it's like this whole, it's super cool. Elantris is super cool. But, I'm definitely uh, going to read that. Yeah. Cause this, the reason I love this is, is world building for sure. Yeah. And just really cool concepts like, um, what like are your the world of dreams where people can have meetings and stuff. And if you go <laughs> That's in, zoom, it's zoom. <laughs> <laughs> if you go there in the flesh and you die, you die in real life. Is, is they that... also call the dream world. Um, it's like where the wolves, it's the wolf's dream. It's where the wolves live too. Okay. So when wolves die, they like go there. And then when wolves sleep, they go there too. It's, it's really interesting and cool. And then oh. there's stuff like um, the thing about like channeling and weaving is you can heal somebody with it. You can hurt somebody with it. You can do really incredible things. But then there's still really simple stuff like, oh, if you have some of this fork root, then your ability to channel disappears for as long as it's in your body. So it's oh, this wow. really interesting idea of like, there's people that have uh, skills that are outside of channeling that are like, they can talk to the wolves, but it's not like... It's not channeling? It's, it's called not. something else? It's like, yeah, it's just like an otherworldly kind of a is skill. It a, is it a talent? That was yes. that word was used in yes. the Wikipedia. So instead of channeling, it's sort of magical, but it's not. It's not channeling. It's just yeah. a talent. It's a very yeah. specific one-off. Yes, exactly. And people can have and like a lot of times. Well, the cool thing about the mag like magic powers and and how you realize that you have them is um, if you say are like, like one of the main characters is a wisdom for her village, which is like. Um, a woman that is like the healer for the okay. village. Also like gives advice and stuff and is kind of the unofficial head of the village. Like the men okay. ha have one, but the woman is her own thing and is just as powerful and if not more so. But for example, like she didn't know that she could channel, but for like her whole time as the wisdom, when she healed people with herbs or did whatever, they would heal so much more remarkably better than anybody else. Oh, so wow. she didn't know that that's what was happening. They okay. were just like, she's a really skilled wisdom. She's just and then later on, healer. it's like, oh, she had a really good talent for healing. So when she found out how to like weave magic and, and do all of that, her skills and healing were far and away wow. beyond anybody else's so it's how like did, little things like that that i don't know i think are cool and that is cool how did, how did she find out that she had channeling powers um i mean other people who can channel so oh. there's like an order of witches called us to die so like if you go for training when they basically go around and they discover women that have the spark like okay the ability to be taught to channel and then yeah. they take them to tarvalon which is like their witch like Hogwarts uh, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's like their island. Yeah. And then um, they train you there. And it's like a pretty rigorous program. It's not fun like uh, Hogwarts. <laughs> right, there's, yeah, there's no dancing. What about, uh, so so the, there's, there's essentially uh, women witches who go out looking for women magicians, channelers uh, who have, or people who have the spark. Yeah. Are there male versions of that? Do they have an island? Um, well, no, because they broke the world. So fuck oh, they, them. They don't get oh, right. anything. <laughs> right. So they just are, the, are they wilders? So no, wilders are women that Ooh. nobody ever found um, who oh, have just the spark. Mm -hmm. So um, what happens is if you have the spark and the power and you start channeling, like you start realizing you have powers and you start doing weird shit and you're like, oh my God. But if no one finds <laughs> you and teaches you how to like direct that, then uh, you can, you like basically burn out, like, and you can die basically. Okay. That's what happens. So the reason that they try to find wilders so that these girls can like be properly uh, trained and don't die, but okay. some wilders survive and, and figure it out. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And just have their own little version of, uh, yeah. 
Okay, so with this series, so your fa- some of your favorite things is the fact that there's this dream world where you can mm-hmm. hold meetings and hang out, and and that it's it's a, it's run by wolves or. Well, it's not run by wolves. Like the basically, when you fall asleep, yeah, uh, the way everybody's dreams are like a star in the night sky, kinda, and people can visit each other's dreams once they know what they look like if they're dream walkers. So a lot of the dream walkers are uh, their version of Native Americans, like the ale. Ah. So mm-hmm. what they do is like they enter the dream and some ale, for example, are in another part of the waste, which is where they live, okay. uh, which is like a desert. So if you want to meet with somebody and they're across the desert, how do you do that? So okay. you go into the world of dreams and then you meet like that. So that yeah. is cool. And sorry go ahead i was just gonna say do you have to uh how do they recognize it is it like an animal crossing thing where you have to send them your address i've never played animal crossing so i only know about a reference it. i understand okay. <laughs> you are you would love animal crossing it is also your wheelhouse <laughs> so i am Sophia very Alexander. excited <laughs> yes <laughs> to try it but yeah basically the more the more uh practice you get dream walking the better you get at it oh. and and so you can recognize other people's dreams just because you're like, oh, that's Jackie. Her life looks <laughs> like this, you know, like, oh, okay. you know okay. what I mean? So and you then just you kind of go, recognize people. Yeah. In, but you in, can also in, fuck people up who do not dream walk if you're like evil <clears throat> and you do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds evil. That doesn't mm-hmm. sound cool. So who are the good guys that you like and who are the bad guys that you like? Okay. Well, so... The Forsaken are the bad guys, and they're Sounds essentially like-, like the 12 uh, most, like, evilest, I guess, wizards or mm-hmm. something. And then there's, like, the Dark One, which is, I guess, like, the devil. Okay. Shaitan, any of that. So a lot of it is, like I said, it's like every religion ever. And uh, the main character is Rand, and he is kind of like the Jesus. Oh. So, he is there and like the prophecies say that he has to like die and get sacrificed and all of this stuff and he has to also save and unite all of these nations and there's all of these prophecies that he is a part of so the book start basically the whole series starts when um one of the witches like one of the as comes to town to this tiny village where rand and his friends live and she knows that one of them is the dragon reborn, which is okay. Jesus. Excellent. And she doesn't so this know. Is a, <laughs> this is a full on Messiah story. This oh, is yeah. Full- oh, yeah. Okay. It's All like right. Messiah and friends, I would call it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. So basically, she doesn't know which. Obviously, it's only a man because only a man could save everyone. So there's only We've three. Been waiting. <laughs> there's three men, and she doesn't know which one it is. They're all friends, so she like is like, "Let's get you out of the village because the dark forces are out to kill you," because they know that you're Jesus or whatever. So right. So she takes them away, and then the, some of the women come because like what are we going to do but follow the men? Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> the women come and like, then basically they don't make it home for many, many books and not until like <laughs> battles and all the shit. So that and whole, the, the whole pack of people that left that tiny village don't make it back to that village for, for books and books. Yes. For okay. a long ass time. And, um, also one of the things is that, uh, when they leave, um, they're kind of leaving to save the town, but the town still gets kind of massacred or a bunch of people get murdered anyway. And then later there's kind of a, like a, like I said, everything comes back around circular. So okay. then there's like another version of this later on that's like different now. And uh, one of the ways that, so one of the talents is recognizing when someone can bend the pattern Okay. That's called Taveran. That's someone that's so powerful that world events shape themselves around them. Wow. So Jesus and his right. two friends, Matt yep. and Perrin. Okay. Um, they, all three of them are that pattern benders. That's why the witch can't tell which one is Jesus. Okay. Like, I don't know. Like these two could be Jesus 
too. I don't know right. which one's it's, Jesus, which it's one's It's definitely friends. one of these three guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she keeps them all together, and they don't know which one either is is the... Rand doesn't know Just that for he's the little Jesus. Bit. And then very clearly it becomes... It that becomes it's Rand. The Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Perrin is the is a wolf guy who Dreamwalker can, guy? Yeah. He can okay. speak with wolves. Um and he can go into the wolf dream, but he can also speak to wolves when he's awake and stuff. Oh, that's good. Um, he can like sense where they are and wolves are basically like uh hate, I guess, the devil and the shadow spawn. Okay. So anything that's devil related, the wolves can sense. And they, oh, like, will battle and kill. And so, like, wolves are, like, the really good guys. Right. So you definitely want to have one around because he can sense that the undead is walking towards you to speak in a D&D kind of fashion. <laughs> yes. He's got an undead detector. And then uh, the so. other guy, Matt, has two things that are interesting about him that I don't know why they jammed into one guy because they were, like, it's not interesting enough for him to have one of the things. I don't really get it. But he's both uh, the reincarnation of the world's best general. Okay. <laughs> and also the luckiest person alive. That like well, wins at dice, wins at everything, like knows uh, when things are gonna like happen or go weird because he can feel the dice rolling in his head. Okay. So yeah, again, one of those would have been fine. <laughs> Two seems like overkill, but fine. But that's, so he's, he's, he's an amazing strategist and leader. And then Not a leader, literally just the general. He sucks at anything else, just war stuff. Well, what? But is as a general, is he like? Does that mean like a fighter? Because like, wouldn't, wouldn't a general be the guy who told everybody where to go and fight? Yeah, the but str- he's like strategist? the guy where you're like, why the fuck is anyone following him? But they're all like, we're with you, Matt. He's so <laughs> cool and weird. And like, how did he know? He's so fierce. Oh, the ladies love him. Like, it doesn't really make any sense. Okay. He just wins stuff and then he goes back to being complete dipshit and it's just like, okay. <laughs> and then he's super lucky so he doesn't ever get killed. Um, he avoids getting killed narrowly. He gets like saved from being hanged. Like he's got really good luck except for the part where someone tries to hang him, you know? Like, right, stuff right. happens to him that's pretty bad. But right. he lives and I guess that's the luck. That's the where the luck comes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. So what's Rand's what's what's Rand's power? So Rand's power is he's like the most powerful male channeler alive. Okay. And so the reason that like he's dangerous is like the Asadai know that he's supposed to save the world, but he's also yeah. gonna go mad at some point. Like all male As- oh. like male channelers do. So, so they're just sort of, he's hugely powerful, but they're like, ah, oh, he's probably going to go nuts at any time. They basically want to put a leash on him and like have him be oh. controlled so that he can survive long enough to save the world, but they can like basically, you know, like still him, like get rid of, like separate him from his power when they need to or kill mm-hmm. him or whatever. Mm-hmm. They basically, their whole job is to find men and to defuse them. Not whole job, but one of them. One of their right. jobs. So, yeah. So they're like, okay, what do we do? He's like supposed to save the world and break the world. And we don't know which order it's you know, like, we need to make sure this goes well. So yeah, that's kind of the whole thing. And he knows he's supposed to die too at a certain point. Okay. And he knows that he's going crazy, but he can't let other people know about how crazy he's going, but they can also see him talking to himself or other people. Okay. And it's this really weird, creepy thing. It's like when you watch Lethal Weapon now and you're like, so we're cheering <laughs> for mentally ill cop Mel Gibson to what? have a weapon and just do whatever the fuck he wants. It's he's the golden- suicidal and he's the hero on the police force. Yeah. It's uh, the Golden State Killer. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... So, okay, so, like, there's so many of these Messiah books that were written, Mm -hmm. and granted, they were written all through, you know, there's always some, I mean, even Frodo is kind of the the Messiah and the Lord of the Rings, but, um, yeah, but there's, like, literally, Stranger in a Strange Land by Heinblen, he Mm -hmm. is the Messiah. I love that book. 
That's a great book. There was a I time- I grok that book. Do you, do you grok that book? I love oh, it. I grok it. I grok it as well. And then, uh, cause I, I love that. I also, uh, speaking of terrible politics, uh, uh, the uh, um, Orson Scott card, the Alvin Maker series. Oh, I have not read that. Well, the first three are great. The next three, he doesn't know where the hell he's going. He's, it's all falls apart. It's and like you're lost. Just like, right. And he can't. Uh, and then at some point he decided to hate gay people. So we we're like, boo. Whoa, that's a twist. It was, uh, it was, it was a Mormon twist. The guy went, he went, uh, he went back to the, he went back to the book that was written in Northern New York and decided to give a shit about that. Mm-hmm. So no he's the guy, that. Orson Scott Carter, he wrote Ender's Game. Mm. and uh so it you know it had some potential anyway but there's so many like when you think about i mean it's 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 the greatest story ever told of course the messiah story and uh so it makes sense that rand would so he's this flawed hero does he live to the last book spoiler Wait till i tell you the best part okay <laughs> hey guess what jackie he's so special yeah three women want to be with him and they don't care if they have to share him. Oh, they There's don't care. no fucking anything in this book that is in any way steamy or whatever. But you can tell his one fantasy is <laughs> that he could fuck three women continuously through his life and have all of them love him and never fight or be upset. Or And it's not that I don't believe in that. It's that there's no point in the book where there's even a consideration for like, hey, well, what, what if a bitch wanted three dudes? And it's very Robert Heinlein. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then also, um, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Of course, three. And and I was, you know, because I'm actually, uh, um, I'm working on this joke about how, because my sexuality for a long time was drunkenness. And, <laughs> and my husband's sexuality was, he was bisexual. And so when we got together, I was like, could our sexuality be monogamy? Would that be okay? And he's like, that would be fun. And, uh, and that is what I, that is what I would wish upon people who enjoy this type of thing. If you, if you had found one person that you would like to do it with, it's less confusing. You don't have to work with bunk beds. It's nice. Anyway. (laughs) No, I am more than pro polyamory. (laughs) This is very much a man's idea and fantasy of everything in this Mm -hmm. book. So, so, I mean, I am personally turned on when the women are together. Okay. And all I want is to be one of them and to just have us fuck each other. Mm-hmm. And I don't really see how he's at all important in any way. <laughs> because they are really cool, you know. But also, like, cool. the fantasy goes, like, one of them is, like, a redhead who is, like, the going to be the queen of Andor, you know, who, whatever. And one of them is uh, one of the Native American ale women. Yes. Um, and one of them yeah. is... I'm like, who's, oh, and one of them is, I think, I think she's supposed to be Asian and like very tomboyish and also okay. has the gift of like reading omens. But I think the idea was you could have everything. The idea yeah. was like, let me take a little bit from everywhere to like show the male fantasy, which is like well, a smorgasbord of pussy. <laughs> which is interesting because you, you want to say, hey, um, that's great. I mean, why wouldn't you write a, fi- a novel where you're lead? Because I mean, whenever people do write fiction, you're like, well, what character are you, right? Who are you the lead character? Are you the the buddy who's, you know, because I spent most of my adult life being the wingman, right? I was constantly going, no, she's not going home with you. No, she's actually... <laughs> She's really, really fucking drunk. Me too. But neither of us are getting in your car. We're, no, that's great. No, you got her number. Call her. Call her. You're good. You're good. All right, let's go. And, <laughs> so, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, like if I wrote a, a novel, I think I would write from the perspective of, I think I would want to be the wolf guy. Who do you want to be in the books? Ooh. I for sure want to be an Asadai. And are those witches or? Those are the the witches that are like in the formal witch order. Um, Okay. Because I feel like one thing that's great is the longer you touch the power, quote unquote, which is the longer you've been channeling for, touch the power just is like, you mean fucking clitoris, right? (laughs) That's what you mean. Just say it. 
I don't um, know. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so, so the thing is, the longer you touch the source for, uh, the more ageless you are and the longer you can live. So, so some us to die have been alive for over 800 years. Oh, okay. Which is wow. fucking dope. So it's like, why would I not want that? Are they, are they murderable? Yes. So how did they, so they live, but they were also shrewd, right? Like they were they're all, mo- they're all mortal, but, um, obviously because they have such great powers, they can protect themselves better than most people. And each us to die, uh, except for the red. Mm-hmm. So there's different colors that they, like you, you claim an Aja, like your red order or whatever. Okay. Um, or different colors. So the red one, they hate men and they want to like still all of them, gentle all of them. And basically they uh, do not believe in this, but everybody else believes okay. in having warders. And a warder is a warrior that is bonded to you um, through magic so that in your brain, you can always feel each other. So he knows when you're in trouble and he needs to come save you. You can tell if he's hurt so you can heal him, stuff like that. So it's like a really cool uh, symbiotic relationship. And it's always uh, one of the the women, witches, and Mm -hmm. and a dude? Yes. But mm -hmm. the green Aja, who loves dudes and just loves to fuck... Has can have multiple warders. That's okay. The I would be so you can have a bunch of warders, and they also fuck. You can also fuck your warders. The other ones do not. They're just okay. like it's a working relationship. But the green like, <laughs> why can't I have a little fun while we're here? <laughs> right, you signed an NDA. We've we have we've talked <laughs> we've talked to HR about this. Anyway, so uh, I'm hoping it's consensual, but yeah, who knows? The thing about science fiction, especially science fiction that was, you know, that isn't particularly woke or awakened only to fall asleep again, uh, I have to say is, um, is that it's consent is always sort of half implied. And then you're like, okay, I do kind of want to be forced, which is such a weird way to write something that is currently not in favor uh, because uh, all of the, for example, all of the currently being written romance novels, consent is such a huge fucking issue. And I read historical romance novels. So they're, they're retconning, they're retroactively putting consent into the 1800s where the guy is like, are you sure you want to do this? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, you're sure, sure. And she's like, yep, yep. And then they fuck. Like, she has to say it twice in the new books. <laughs> what I find so wild about that is, like, the way that they write consent is so, like, sterile and kind of unsexy, as opposed oh. to just being, like, if the woman takes agency and tells the man what she wants, right? then you don't have to have him ask a million times if she's okay. Right, well, and that doesn't is, always. I mean, do you know what I mean? It, yes, because sometimes and I'm the, not the, against the, a man asking if you're okay. Please. No, 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 because the consent goes both ways too. Like mm-hmm. uh, I have strung on my way into a situation where a dude is like, "Well, that was weird," and you're like, "Well, you were hard," and he's <laughs> like, mm. "Anyway, so uh, like literally, it's not." So the consent does it goes both ways, and it and it. And I think the sterileness of it is sort of a lesson rather than a literal, like a, a not a literal, um, a, a, a literary m- mode. Like in the, I think the literariness of that, that sterile consent asking is just the purpose of romance novels is to teach people how, they're just like games, you know, they're to teach you how to have some sort of social interaction with, in, and what the rules sort of can be or should be or fantasy as well. So I think, I think it's more of a lesson than, um, cause it does pull you out of the book. Yeah. And it sucks <laughs> because it, it sucks because it doesn't have to be that way. And I think the better thing to do would be to write, not like a after school special manual edition of how to like fuck a girl without raping her. Mm-hmm. That seems insane to me. Why don't we actually teach two people how to interact in a way where the entire time it's consensual? There isn't the one little like moment where you're like, 
now I just stuck my dick in you. Is this okay? <laughs> just the I've fact that women, done. We, yeah, <laughs> just the fact that like men are led to believe that interacting with women is somehow so strange and foreign. It's like, well, if you would never fo- force your man friend to do anything uncomfortable, I don't know why you don't take that same logic to your other relationships. Well, it's, a, and I will tell you why. It's because the civilization process is incredibly slow. Like these are, these are literally brand new revelations for some people, men and women. Women, you know, I sat in a green room and a woman comic that you might know as well, slapped the ass of the waitress. And I said, what the fuck was that? And she said, that's my MO. I said, acting like a dick dude? And she goes, yeah. And I said, please not around me. And the waitress didn't know what to do because it was a woman who slapped her ass. And you're just like, but the thing is, is five years ago, I think uh, I would have done what everyone else in that room had done, which was sort of an uncomfortable, what the fuck was that? And then said nothing about it, which I have sat next to really shitty shit like that and not said anything. And that's not okay. But it's something that I live with. And it's, you know, something that I'm working to not do anymore. Right? I think all of us are. I mean, the ideal version of all of us is that we speak up when we see shit that's like, not okay. (laughs) But sometimes the processing of it takes too long. And by the time you're done processing that what had happened was wrong, and you're trying to say something, it's not even like the moment is gone. The waitress is gone. People are gone from the green room and you're like, (laughs) oh, but I just found the right thing to say, which was, hey, she works here. Don't fucking touch her. That's not okay. Right. And it's, which is why I think that sometimes um, art, and we can say that romance novels and the Robert Jordan books and Will and Grace are art of a sort. And sometimes the message has to be so in your face like a man saying, like Robert Jordan saying, these are strong women. Sure, they wore pretty dresses. And that guy got to have sex with three women. And those women got to have sex with their warders. But they're at least strong and they did eventually listen to their ideas. And you're like, yes, thank you very much for this crumb. I will take it. <laughs> and <laughs> It is like that. That is like, yeah. Because the women in Robert Jordan's books accomplish incredible things. They yeah. are everything from witches to queens to healers to i mean so many really cool really beautiful things like all um, the, they're all the savage that, there's yeah. this incredible like i mean i guess race i don't really know what to call it in fantasy books but like this um i guess nationality this group of people that are uh seafarers and it's okay. women who run the ships and okay. women who make all of the deals and women who are in charge. And when they're on ships, they're topless because okay. why would they not be? That's like comfortable for them. And just mm-hmm. the idea that there's, uh, um, there's matriarchal societies in Robert Jordan yeah. is in itself nice to read. Yes, it's, a, it, it's not, an achievement. It's not completely woke. It's not, you know. No. But... I swear to God, he's trying. It's 1990. He's given totally. it a shot. I appreciate it, Robert Jordan. And <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And it, I mean, the really cool and amazing things are like, yeah, to me, the world building, the magic, all of the different things that it encompasses, you know, it right. gets you thinking in so many really fun, different directions that I think um, it is the perfect way to like escape which I don't yeah. know that um, like you have to have cancer to really appreciate. I think right now is a great time to have escapism. And this yeah. is to me, you know, like, like a good way to do that. I okay. would love to have like a feminist version of these books where like, A, there was actual fucking. Right. And B, where it wasn't that women You're about are so to get- cool but orbiting. You're you know, so, you're totally, man. you, uh, this is an attainable goal. People at the Sophia on Twitter, <laughs> feel free to make her a thread. Cause I bet you Outlander is just that. Cause I, I was never, I, I started Outlander 
I started Game of Thrones. I have yet to start these Robert Jordan books, actually. Uh, but you know I have, they're making a TV series of them right now. Why wouldn't they be? Of uh, course, what, but I'm just you, saying it would be a good time to catch up because... Yeah. Have, 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 to... By the way, uh, Sophia Alexandra has a new album out. It's called Father's Day, and it's everywhere that you would listen to it, an, an album of stand-up comedy. And it's uh, The Sophia, S-O-F-I-Y-A. And here's... So have you ever... Have you read these N.K. Jemison? high fantasy books no that are out i think there's some fucking in it um they are talk about world building it's they she won the hugo three years in a row she finished the series she finished writing the series before she published the first book she's w kamau bell's cousin what uh, yeah so there's i love that that's the <laughs> uh she's an amazing author uh, incredibly prolific, but the Broken Earth series is uh, the one you want to read. And um, to start, even though I understand the rest of them are great, and she's also writing a Green Lantern uh, comic book right now, which is fantastic. About I'd like to do that because I've not been really reading that much fantasy. I was like a huge Clive Barker head, and I okay. read so much of it. I used to jerk off to Magica all the time. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I was like, ooh, someone who just shifts and doesn't have a gender or a, <laughs> or a oh, sure. sexuality or a, or a, you, you whatever. want some, you so know, who was writing that. in the, in the, in 1990 and has amazing women characters and male characters and sexy talk and gender fluid is uh, Lois McMaster Bujold, the Vorkosigan series. Uh, you yeah. have to make me a list of I'll make you a all list. of this. I am so uh, excited. Uh, let me just tell you that the audience, uh, the Rangers of the Dork Forest, were like, when's she going to mention Bujold? I bet she's going to mention Bujold. Well, it <laughs> happened. It happened. All of those of you who had, had put a lottery on it, had an over-under. Uh, so would you, would you say you have to start reading the book from the beginning, The Eye of the World? Yes. You can't, you can't just jump in the middle? No. And, I wouldn't. Yeah, just Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, Dragon Reborn, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you have a favorite one, though? The Shadow Rising, The Fires of Heaven, um, It gets kind of shitty in the middle um, <laughs> for some books, but, like, right? I don't think I could pick one because in my mind, it's all just one story. One giant So it's, like, hard story. for me to, to, to pick apart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, the ones that I like the least are where, like, to me, it's right. boring to not be focused on the main shit for so long, you know? Okay, so, so it's like, 800 please, pages. I'm like, please get back to the main story, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe book 11. Maybe book 11 was literally not focused on the main story and it was driving. And it just oh, reading about magic and stuff and like the way that people fight in a magic fight is really mm -hmm. cool. But oh, that's cool. a lot of the reading uh, is like a battle where it's just like battle stuff. I'm not right. as interested. Yeah. So Knife of Dreams is book 11. I think that and, one's good. Uh, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. Right. Because all you're going to do is sort of get an impression because there's so mm -hmm. many books. It's so and... many. <laughs> <laughs> that is outstanding. So. Um... Oh, and I think he also has a spanking fetish, which Emma Arnold oh, and I were talking about. Oh, she has she like, read them? No, but she had like, I think a friend or a boyfriend or something that did. And she was like, hey, is it really spanking heavy? And then I started thinking about it and I was like, <laughs> that's so weird that he does mention all the time. Like, oh yeah, I just wanted to bend her over my knee and spank her. Oh, she wow. Bad. Jesus and I was like, Christ. Okay, we just learned a little bit about you, Robert Jordan. Yes, we did. I mean, that's... <laughs> And that is the thing about reading. When you read a lot of books by one author, you're like, oh, I, I genuinely, you can't hide who you are 14 books later. That's not gonna, you're- Jackie, are you not scared that someone will like go through all of your comedy and podcasts and then just put together a little shorthand that's like, oh yeah, Jackie's obsessed with this and this and this. Oh, I think that's been done. That's uh, <laughs> the fact that somebody made a Wikipedia page about me is already there's too much info. I'm like, what did I mention? Like literally, the name of my stepmother and my siblings are all on the Wikipedia page. I was like, that's a that's a lot of info. What's happening? Damn. And, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think 
Yeah, I think it's like stand-up. It's like anything. You, you know, if you watch someone perform, you could be wearing a hat. Maybe you got a funny mustache on, but you wrote the jokes. So <laughs> we get to know what you're thinking about. So if it's spanking, that's where you're at. Are they, do they have pets? Do they have familiars? Do they have magical animals besides wolves? So there are magical animals that have been captured from like parallel worlds, essentially. So there's parallel worlds and different timing and like characters go and see like, oh, this is what it would have been like if this happened or this is oh. a, a possible reality or whatever. There's a lot of these like, so the Asadai have to pass through tests to like become like there's different levels of being a witch or whatever. Mm -hmm. And some of the tests are like, you go through this magical portal and then okay. in it, you go through experiences and like, basically you have to be able to pass the test and come back out. And if you can't, then like, you don't do it. So a lot of it is, it shows you like realities that it thinks you might want more than this. And then it's up to you to like navigate your way out to be like, oh yeah, this isn't real or, or this isn't what I want or it's oh, really cool. That is really cool. That's kind and of then, neat. yeah, and then parallel, I mean, and there's also, like I said, reincarnation, a ton of, ton of people are reincarnations of other people. Okay. And so they're like, oh, I didn't even know how I had this skill, but this is how it is. And like, you know, even like Jesus, he knows who he's the reincarnation of. It's like Luz oh. Theron, who is another big magician from like the olden age. Okay. So it's everything together, all of the religions, <laughs> all of the That's awesome. All of the mashups, all available in one giant series. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes sometimes super cool imagery, sometimes poorly written, but still super cool imagery. Is that mm -hmm. what I'm getting? Yes. Okay, I love it. You know, we are at an hour, my friend. Uh, that'll happen. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sophia Alexander, by the way, is a great comic, and you should find her everywhere that you find stand-up comedy, and she has a new album out called Father's Day, and it is spelled S-O-F-I-Y-A, Alexandra, like you would spell Alexandra. Uh, and her Twitter handle is at Instagram, too, is the Sophia. Mm -hmm. There you go, the Sophia, you guys. And feel free uh, to uh, tweet at her the literally just a pile of sexy times, uh, gender bending uh fantasy uh epic stuff because uh guess what oh we know it exists right yeah and i it's been so long since i've gotten into new fantasy and i was really like i used to read a lot more graphic novels too okay and now i'm more like really like on earth we're briefly gorgeous you know that's what i'm reading now what is that have you read that it's by oh. ocean wong Okay, I'm is it getting, self, is it sort of philosophy or no, non, nonfiction? It's a gorgeous, um, poetic type memoir. Oh, okay. Sort of. It's kind of like a letter to his mom that she's not ever going to read. Okay, it's, that's sweet. Yeah, no, but it's like, it's like about her being abusive, but also like sure. <laughs> her being from um, sh her surviving the Vietnam war and like how that uh, changes a person and like makes you who you are. And like, he's also a queer writer and just as an immigrant who is queer, it was a big deal for me to like, I really wanted to read another queer immigrant story. <laughs> yeah. And I loved it. I, there were so many, he's also like an incredible poet. Okay. And when you read this, the, beauty of his writing is it took my breath away I okay. had to reread a bunch of times the lines that would just be like oh my god like how did he do this so it's what's so his good. name again and what's the name of that book the book is called on earth we're briefly gorgeous you can tell he's got away with words just from the title yep. and his name is uh ocean wong uh, if I'm pronouncing it? it wrong, I'm really sorry. Hold on. How do you pronounce it? I don't know. <laughs> it isn't N G. It isn't Win, is it? It's V U O N G. Is that V U O N G? I don't know, but uh, we've spelled it now, and so people can find it. Yeah, uh, and, you've and it's you've, truly. It's you guys are gonna love that book. That it's book gorgeous. So good. Okay, Sophia Alexander, thank you so much for doing thank the Dork so Forest. Much. This has been a delight. Uh, Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that?
If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?